So this is the E350 Morphin Terrarium from Synthesis Technology. It's a digital wavetable oscillator that's got 192 waveforms spread across three different banks, which we can select on the bank switch, the A, B and C. This has really smooth interpolation, creating over 24,000 different wave types that will really smoothly morph between all these different settings within the wavetable and it's completely glitch free, gorgeous morphing between these waves. It will go down into LFO territory, so that provides some really interesting modulation sources. And next to that, we've got the E355 Morphing Dual LFO, built very much on the same technology. So dual LFO, they either share the same wave shape and can have different rates for the LFOs, or have different wave shapes and the same rate, and this again is built on wave tables. This does go up into audio territory, so the E350 and the E355 pair really nicely together, and they actually sort of step on each other's toes a bit in terms of the ranges that they cover. Let's check out the E350. We've got a range switch for high, medium and low. We're going to stick high in the audio range, and let's turn up our sound and we'll go through each of the banks and have a quick scan through those waves. We start with a sine. And you can hear we've worked up the harmonic series in this particular table of waves. I'm coming out of the X and Y output which is X as the row in the table and Y as the column. So let's change the column within this wave table. So we had some simpler synth tones in there, some organ-like tones and the harmonic series of sine waves. Let's go to bank B. Finally, bank C. You can see there we've got more standard waves, ramps, saws, sines, triangles and squares. Coming out of the Z output, this is just a single plane, single row of values. We don't have two positions to morph like we did with the X and the Y. Let's check out the Z output. Go to back B. A 
and a quick look at Bankier. Let's go back to the X and the Y output and we'll actually start to modulate this because this is really where it comes to life. We're going to use a couple of simple LFOs, one slightly slower than the other. We're going to attenuate these in the UVCA just with simple level control. So I'll plug in the LFOs, turn up the level in the VCA and listen to this morphing. So first, let's pick a wave and morph the X position. With a static wave selected, I'm going to turn up the LFO's level. Turning down that modulation, let's now modulate the Y position with a different LFO. So I'll turn up my sound, which is static, and then turn up the level on the VCA. So we're turning up the LFO modulation, going to Morph Y. Slow down the LFO. Add in some of the X morphing. Now, if you imagine that into a huge reverb, you're in sort of ambient and drone heaven. So in this patch, let's look at using wavetables as modulation. We've got the E35 morphing dual LFO going into our scope so you can see the waves, and this is going to modulate a low pass filter. We've got a simple static sound on the E350 morphing terrarium, and that's going into this filter. So let's turn up the filters cut off and listen to the sound. So you can hear a simple filter sweep. Let's turn the cutoff and turn up the depth of modulation from the LFO1 output on the E355. You can see that mirrors the pattern on the Mordax data oscilloscope. Let's morph through the different waves. Let's flick through to bank C, which is full of more exotic wave tables. So we've actually moved in the wave, we've got quite a different and sort of varied sounding modulation just from this single part of the wave table. Wow. 
Because this wavetable is quite fast and fluctuating, I'm going to go down into the lower LFO range and we'll check that out on the oscilloscope. So you can see there, there's a lot to be had from using wavetables as modulation sources at LFO range, just as there is from audio. So at the minute, you listen to the E350, and that's completely static. We can remove this modulation. And here's the tone. And just like before. We can morph those waves. I want to look at audio rate modulation. So I'm going to patch in modulation to morph the X position in the wavetable. I'm using a VCA for simple attenuation at the moment. And I'll turn up the depth of that modulation so we can hear what it's doing at its current LFO rate. And that's what we're looking at on the oscilloscope, my modulation source. And I'll take that up to audio rate and we'll start to generate new harmonics. So that's the LFO movement. I'm going to take my modulation source up to a higher rate, and then right into audio rate. I'm going to change the depth of modulation. Let's play with this further by using an LFO from the E355 to open and close our VCA, adjusting the amount of modulation from this audio rate source. So I've got the E355 to the CV in of the VCA. I'm going to turn up the depth of modulation and turn up the CV amount from this LFO change the depth of modulation. Let's play around with the E355's waves. Just my audio rate source. And then modulate that depth from the E355 again. gone through different options and a few different ways to patch these wavetables. Let's create a big stereo drum with the XY output and the Z output to finish off this video. So here's my drone patch. 
It's currently completely dry and we're listening to the Z output and the X and the Y output in stereo. Got LFO1 going into the first channel of a VCA just for some attenuation and this is going to morph the X position on the E350. I've got the second LFO which is going to be a different LFO shape coming out from the E355 into a second channel of a VCA and this is going to morph the Z position. So we're going to get independent morphing of the wave tables that are panned hard left and hard right. I'm then going to turn up some effects, which is clouds from mutable instruments with some reverb and granular processing and create sort of big ambient drone soundscape. First, we'll start with some modulation and keep this dry. Let's turn up the dry wet on clouds. So there we have it for wavetables, as a modulation source, as an audio rate source, as a smoothly morphed tone, be that one that's rich and quite fizzy and full in harmonic content, or one that's smooth and glassy or even organ-like. We then used audio rate modulation, and we've just heard that using two of them in stereo can be used to create a big ambient drone through an effects chain. <laughs> 